All right, so we're here at CES 2014 with Greg Harper, who co-founded GadgetOff and runs his own technology consulting, gadget consulting company, and knows everything about everything about the gadgets. Uh, to, and Greg, what is the theme for you? Like, what's what's been something you're looking forward to for CES this year? Well, first of all, if you look at the categories in CE, you realize that the categories have dropped dramatically. So the number of different items, they're like, you know, we used to have like 50, 60 items. Now we're down to eight to 10. And that uh, co uh, comprises about 80% of all the CE spend. And in that area, what is, what's affecting that, of course, is the smartphone, because that becomes an engine in your pocket. And all of the accessories that connect the smartphone, the sensors, like what Sony just sh showed, uh, but also all the wearables. So I think you're going to start seeing the smartphone as the core, yeah. and then all these other devices connecting onto it. So that's going to be a theme here. Of course, Ultra HD, uh, 4K, with a lot of emphasis on the streaming of it. Uh, everybody seemed to announce streaming. So what do you mean streaming? Uh, service, streaming services. services. Like yeah, yeah. Like well, I mean, we heard Netflix here yeah. at Sony, but we also heard Netflix this morning at LG. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to start seeing a lot of services being streamed as 4K. Uh, so that's going to be interesting uh, as well. Are people going to be able to handle that on their network connections at home? It seems like my, I can barely handle you know, Netflix and, as standard def. It, it's going to, H, HVAC, uh, you're probably, if you've got a 15 megabit connection, yeah. you're going to be okay, 15 to 20 megs. So you're not going to be able to do it on your dial-up DSL, yeah, but Fios. if you have Fios or if you have even cable modems, because even the cable modems will get you about uh, 50 megabits, right. uh, so you should be able to do that pretty well. So uh, how about wearables? That seems to be like the, the, uh, the big thing. You've got one... I've got, oh, I've got wrist, you've got the Pebble on one I, wrist. I've got the Pebble on here. This is the Samsung phone, and I also have the, uh, the Fit. You got another one up the Yeah, another one up the wrist. sleeve, yeah, and I got yeah. a few in my pocket. I'm looking at, the, they're all sensors, and I'm trying to understand what is the role of sensors in, in this world. Sony showed it with a, with a band, but you can see a lot of different people doing sensors. Uh, the other big area here is automotive. And when you think about it, the car is, in fact, a, a rolling computer. And the final one that I think I've seen, and I saw that from LG and from Samsung, is this whole idea of connected home, where you, instead of having individual apps for every device, you now have one app that talks to everything. Now, there's a product called Revolve, R-E-V-L-V, -E yeah. um, which is, in fact, a third-party device. It has seven radios in it, so it'll talk Zigbee and Z-Wave and Wi-Fi and, wi and Bluetooth and, and cellular uh, CDMA, I mean, uh, cellular LTE. Mm -hmm. And it brings, it goes out and looks in your home to find all these devices and says, oh, you've got a Hue light, you've got a Nest thermostat, you've got a uh, uh, Yale lock, you've got something else. Instead of having separate apps from it, brings them all together. So I think you're going to start seeing these separate apps uh, all coming together. You'll see it in the health area. So Withings, for example, now has the scale and the blood pressure. They have a sleep thing they just showed. Right. So you can start seeing the they bringing together. So instead of isolated devices, yeah. you'll see them coming together as a total. Solution. Are the other companies working together? If, like if you have an LG fridge and a Samsung uh, dishwasher and a and a Google Nexus phone, uh, you know, do they talk to each other? Right now, no. Uh, Samsung to Samsung, LG to LG. But that's why the Revolve is so interesting because Revolve doesn't care, it goes across platform. And they're basically opening open, a, open API. They're saying, look, you know, we'll build all the radios. Uh, all we're going to be is a gateway. You build your own apps, talk to us. So you're going to see that, whether it's that company or others, but you're going to see companies trying to put those things together. Right. I noticed the, the companies missing from here are the big platform companies. Apple has never been here. Right. Uh, Microsoft is strangely pulled away. And then Google, which everyone's you know, apps and phones talk to and use, Android is not here either. Well. They're, they are here, they're just not on the floor. Um, so if you want to have meetings with them, there are in fact things happening in hotel suites, et cetera. But they have their own platform. They have, you know, Google has the I.O., Apple's got the developer conference, Microsoft has got their, uh, uh, their other conferences. So they have more than an opportunity. They don't want to be lost in all the noise. But everyone knows that that's still the base. The most interesting one, though, is uh, what LG was doing, is they've now, they, you know, they bought WebOS from HP. And they're using that now as part of their smart TV stuff. So that's the first sort of, well, I don't know if we want to be so dependent on, on Google uh, that we're happening. I mean, they still, of course, build the Nexus phone for them. They still do the Chrome. That was another interesting one, by the way, Samsung today during their press conference, how many Chromebooks they're selling in education. Uh, that surprised me. I knew they were selling a lot. I didn't realize there was that many. Do you like the Chromebook? I tried it, and I thought the build quality was a little bit low. Which one did you try? It was the HP Chromebook. Oh, OK. So the Pixel, which is their, their flagship yeah. one, that is a very nice computer. The, the problem, of course, it doesn't work if it's not connected. And a laptop that doesn't, that, you know, you can't use if it's not connected has some issues. But from an educational perspective, you think about it, you go to school, one of the biggest problems is what do you do? You know, all the kids are writing software on it. And then, you know, what do you do? You know, how, do you, how do you keep it update? Yeah. Well, on the Chromebook, every time you power it on, it's got a new, new version of software. Right. So right. that's kind of cool. So that's good business there. All right. All right. Thanks, Greg. Yeah.